Hey Mark, how you doing, man? I can't hear Hi. you. I'm, oh. I'm doing good. I'm sorry, I was muted for a second. Okay, okay. <clears throat> You're doing good? Yeah. I uh we are uh we're pretty over time, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What uh what, what are we gonna do with this? Let's uh let's uh, I, I, I mean, I have the changelog. If you are ready to receive it. <laughs> I'm ready to receive it. I'm ready to receive it. <laughs> so the changelog. Okay. I see that I don't have uh, the changelog uh, prepared. Uh, it was like this. Let's uh, figure this out. Oop. All right. Changelog. So what, what, what was it like doing the changelog today? Well, <clears throat> what was it like doing it today? Uh, it, was, uh, it was a good one. I would say it's a, it was a... Uh, Nothing crazy, but not boring. It was a, it was a good, uh, some good stuff to talk about. Um, so, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing too special to shout out, but we can, we can get started on it. I always ask you, you don't cover wing lips, right? Um, I don't. I probably should, um, but I don't. I, I would like. I'm doing just less work. <laughs> <laughs> It would be correct to do it, but I am not doing it. Um, yes. We need like a second change log. Yeah. <laughs> to to do it. To do this, but it doesn't optimize the amount of work that uh, it doesn't. It doesn't do optimize it. my yeah. my pleasure yeah. <laughs> of what I want to do during the day. <clears throat> okay. It would be interesting though. And we, I'm already whittling down, like you know, and I'll as I see, you see here, 57 yeah. changes. Yeah. Um, which I mean, we've had more before, but even then, like whittling it down. Yeah. Would, you know, bite-sized lists is already, yeah. you know, pushing it to fit in the time slot that we don't have anymore because we're done over time <laughs> on okay. the show. <laughs> okay, okay. But, uh, so let's... Uh, so you got your answer. Yep. Yeah. You're not <laughs> there will be no, there will, it will not be here. I think I did it once. Never again. Really? Okay. <laughs> what do we have for uh, as part of uh, Wing? As part of Wing, the first up we have... As usual, we start off with Chris, just because that's the way the order of the Git log also gives me my changes in. And nice. I just kind of like, oh, yeah, let's put Chris's stuff in there. Alphabetically, he wins most of the time. Um, yep. So in the simulator, you hmm. like, okay, we're in the cloud. Like, obviously, there's permissions to deal with. And, and Wing, as a, as a solution, takes care of hooking up, like, functions that need to, look, to call into buckets or queues and or, you know, other inter resource um, permissions. <clears throat> in the simulator, we just didn't really pay attention to that. Everything just had access to everything because there was no concept yeah. of access. Um, but now that we recently, and I think I talked about it a couple change logs ago, I mentioned it, this like lift thing, which allows you, like, you to kind of override and take control of like, Hey, I want to make sure that this thing gets lifted, which therefore means it gets the permissions registered in the in-flight and, and the function that you're um, using it in. Um, so, like, here's an example of where, you know, Wing kind of can't can't handle this sort of scenario uh, yeah. where it can't like see like, oh, we, you know, I I don't know what I is, so I don't know which thing to give permission to. So normally this would be an error, but if you add lift, right, it. Uh, it lets you do it. It's not air anymore. And as long as you do it correctly, this should all work. But in the simulator, if you got this wrong, which I did here, so this adds get, yep. we actually need put permissions. Right. Uh, previously in the simulator, this would just uh, this would just work. <clears throat> and you wouldn't know you got anything wrong until you tried to deploy this to the cloud. Right. Exactly. Uh, now, now it's caught. Now we kind of keep track of what permissions things should have. And we per like, Correctly error in cases yep. where it's not there. Yep, uh, it makes it makes oh. a lot of sense. I, when I, I when I've when I've I created actually a test. I, when I open a, a bug, or, or I usually love putting tests. I mean, the, my test was using TypeScript, so I mean, I was using external to do the the put on TypeScript, and I did, and I showed that uh, when I run this test locally, it passes, and when I run this test in the in actually when I run this test. Uh, locally, it doesn't pass because it wasn't supposed to work. And when I ran this on the on AWS, it the test did pass. So I and I think that we have to make sure that everything that works, that things work the same 
in the simulator and in the cloud. I think that's why it's, this is super important. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Nice to well, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. All right. Uh, next up, another one from Chris. Uh, this one's a pretty huge uh, DX win, I think. Uh, log stream now. So wing test previously would just wait. I think you, I don't know if it was each test or until all tests were finished before it would give you the logs of, I think it's each test. It would wait for each test to finish before giving you all the uh, like standard out logs or any errors or any other sort of, if there were debug flags, it would, it would wait until everything was done and then spit it out to you. Um, so now it happens immediately when tests run. Awesome. Great. Does, does, does it, do you know if it streams during the test or only when yep. the test ends? No, no, no. Okay. Well, During the yeah, so it's as it happens, as things run and happen, they it, it, I, it's one of the features that I mean, I it's impossible. I mean, when you do a bin, when you do a you, you kill dot wait until and you want in, and you add in logs to see what's happened and nothing happens, you say, Why isn't it happening? Because only when the test over it, it, it outputs all the, the log. Great job, Chris. This was terrible to you. This was uh, this is a great DX uh, improvement for us. I thought you said that. Great job, Chris. This was terrible. But I know no, you're talking about that. I, I, I know I, the previous experience was terrible. I, 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 I had to move. I, I kept using uh, cloud functions and then turned it into tests. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Awesome. Uh, next up, we have one from Halad, which I know he's, he's he's still sitting there, isn't he? He's sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> How could he know? I, <laughs> um, <laughs> So the uh, step functions diagrams. So we're talking. It's working. It's working. Okay. <laughs> Next time, make it work. The first attempt. <laughs> so cloud test snapshots. So this feature uh, is when when you run ring tests against the cloud. That it's awesome that we can do that. First of all, it's like a huge, crazy, cool thing that Wing allows you to do. You can run the tests locally and in the cloud using just the same. All the same stuff, but cloud tests are pretty heavy-handed. They're you know they they can be important to run, but like it's it's slow, it's expensive. Maybe that's when you want to run every single time you make a change to anything, especially if nothing even really changed. Um, but with this uh, new feature, when you run wing tests, uh, you know locally in your machine, if you run it to test the cloud with, for example, the TFAWS platform. Uh, after the tests pass, a snapshot is written, a, a markdown snapshot is written with like the the infrastructure that was deployed to that did that passed that test. That so basically telling you like, hey, this is this infrastructure works. What I just what this was tested and this is what it looked like when it worked. So you know, th there you go. And yeah. by default, the behavior in CI is instead of rerunning the tests, it'll. Instead, it'll it'll assert saying it'll it'll do the compilation to see what the infrastructure will be, and it'll compare like has anything changed, and that's your new tests effectively. Instead of because like you, you can get a lot of the same uh, not not the same assurances, but you can get a lot of the same assurances in knowing, uh, you know, will it work? Well, it worked when it was run before, and it wasn't run on my computer; it was run in the cloud, so I know that it worked. Uh, when it was you know something else, so if it if it didn't change, then it's good, and if it did, then we have to reevaluate. Nice. Oh, there you in go. What, which occasion will I re redeploy something that hasn't changed at all? Uh, sorry, what was that? I mean, I never mind. I th I, th I understand the value. I think it's uh, yeah. Okay. I, mean, uh, you know, I, I when I, I would I have to ask a question. When would I not get any changes in my uh, snapshot because when you call change, I have a I have a change in the function asset. I mean, every change will trigger a change like this, right? I mean, every change in the code. Uh, yes and no. I mean, so one thing we can say for what this was maybe, I don't know if it was what it was designed for. Again, a lot can speak to it, but probably one of the best use cases that we can use it for right now okay. is for testing libraries. Okay. Um, because yes, in a real application, there's probably just one entry point, or maybe like another like another one, like just like you know, it's not it's you don't really nice. you know have a lot of different things. So yeah, in those cases, it's a little bit iffy that like every change might change the snapshot every single time. 
which in which case maybe you should be running the tests every time. I don't know. That's the, but beside that point, for libraries, you'll have multiple entry points and multiple snapshots, and not right. all of the snapshots will run every time or need to run every time. Um, so, and you can get a better view of what did your change actually change instead of, yeah. So does that, does that help? Is that a, yeah. Yeah. It helps a lot. You want, you want to cheap in? Uh, no, you're good. Awesome. Man. It helps a lot. Great. So very, very cool. Uh, next up from Gary, we have a, a regex type. I think I, I called it a, I guess it is a type. Yeah. So you could, you can create new instances of a regex with a regex.compile. Right. Okay. Um, so and then and then with that instance of regex, we have all these nice APIs you can use. There are actually quite a few APIs. I didn't list them here because I wanted to keep mysterious. You know, everyone go look into it. What can you do now? Um, but it's actually a pretty more, a pretty expansive um, nice uh, API, which I, I think will be nice. Um, so this was pretty like a hotly desired thing. I think most people like will quickly run into this and be like, okay, extern, you know, quick a quick yeah. extern to go. Yeah. Use the built-in node yeah. regex, and now you don't have to. Now it's built-in. Awesome. Yep. I don't have a lot to add other than, than thank yeah. you, Gary. It's really important. Yeah, thank you, Gary. Like always, thank you. And another community contribution from our good friend Marcio. Nice. Uh, subscribe queue on topics. Um, this is like a really interesting high-level API in the sense of like. We're connecting two, like being able to connect two pieces of infrastructure is always a super important and like interesting conceptually to, to thing to add. So you can have a topic that, you know, you can, you can publish messages to the topic, but if you want a more, um, I don't know what the right word is, a, a deliberate work, like a system of like stream of messages and, and okay. not like necessarily like have a, have a more linear and, you can change behavior. Like you, you, having a queue is probably a better way to pull work from or pull messages from. So instead of like listening to the topic, you can listen on the queue that receives messages from the topic. Yeah. Um, and you, you can do your work from that. You know that opens up, you know, dead letter queues and having having other optimizations and distributed workflows using queues and not just having the topic. And this wires it up for you automatically. I, I'll say I I, I love that in you can see the difference in the simulator and AWS implementation because in the simulator, we, we just use the simple, like there's a, there's a function that listens on the queue and pushes it or it listens on the topic and then pushes to the queue. But like, you don't need to do that in AWS that there, AWS has a built in the right. um, events like system right. To, right. to put that like messages the over. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't, you're not, you're not like, you, there's no need to pay for a function, you know, to, right. to do that right. same thing. Um, so it's always nice to have that. Like make sure we have actually optimized implementations. Right, exactly. Um, that's really yeah. good. Yeah. So this was Matthew. I think Matthew, I, I think that he complained that working with the simulator UI was his, was his uh, most difficult part. So, uh, but I think he did an excellent job with this. And, uh, and I love it. Working for this feature? He was yeah. Saying? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. But, um, well, is, I'm glad he made it through. Yep, exactly. Uh, <laughs> All right, next up, uh, I have my own name in here. That's always fun. Um, so in with extern, when you write when you write uh, extern like in flights, you can you kind of I don't know if people even really notice or they just did it automatically that you could have TypeScript and JavaScript files as your extern like your whatever your extern files, but only if it's in flight. Yeah. Um, and if you try to do the same thing pre-flight, you would get an error. Usually, I mean, yeah. either about TypeScript or about or about uh, the module system. If it was yeah, like a CJ, or common JS, cool. or whatever, whatever it was, it was always annoying. You're like, oh, okay, I guess okay, I have to do something different now. Um, so now the uh, um, now pre-flight works very similarly to in-flight. Not exactly the same. The primary difference is there's no bundling happening pre-flight, which actually gives you more. Power. Maybe you don't have to worry about bundling as a step, but you have you can use TypeScript, you can use ESM, you can use CJS and ESM. You can you know you can import things that are CJS ESM. You you know you have more some more expressive power there. You don't really have to worry about what thing, what type of thing you're importing. Yeah. Um, so 
So nice. hopefully that makes things easier. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've, uh, I've came across, it's, it's still so annoying, to be honest, uh, the fact that it doesn't work. It works only for in-flight, drove me crazy. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and, I, and I'm glad, it's, I mean, it's interesting to see what's happening with TypeScript, and, uh, and I love the work you do down here. Uh, thank you, Mark, for doing this. We have uh, Marcio talking about uh, 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 he basically is adding also uh, uh, dead letter queues and sent multiple messages to the topic. So, uh, so he's, there's, there's some more work that Marcio is doing right now on the on this topic. He also did the uh, the Winglib uh, the fan out the fan out messages, which, which kind mm -hmm. of related. So he was already passionate about this. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, Marcio. Yeah, really, really cool to see like higher level subtractions so on an architecture level. Um, yeah, really, really nice, really nice to have those. Yeah. Um, so for this one, uh, change from Yoav, which uh, Yoav's changes are always fixes, like they're always considered fixes in uh, Git, but yeah. they're almost always like unlocking whole new things. I mean, it's like a <laughs> they feel like features, but they're but they are. Technically, gaps, I guess, that we had to had to fix and figure out. But uh, this was a pretty big one because so um, static methods. If you tried to do new bu cloud bucket or any new cloud preflight class, uh, you would get an error, and I, I think it was even like a kind of a late error, like it happened during yeah. the execution of preflight. It didn't even happen like in, you couldn't see it in VS Code. Right. Um, it would say like, oh, you can't. That's not a. Not I don't know what the error was, but it didn't work. Not a construct. You don't get uh, null is not a construct. Something like that. Yeah, there you go. Because it didn't the static. It didn't know where the it was coming from. Usually for like instance methods, right. um, you do new cloud bucket. It's where you you know, your instance is. It's the this is the uh, right. exactly will be the scope. But so now the, static. Yeah. So in the create button in in, in the line that says new cloud bucket implicitly, if this wasn't a, sp a static message, you would have this as the scope, right? This yeah. this. But there is no this, so and then this code is what is the scope for this code? Here you don't know the scope of the code; you only know it from the caller, right? Yeah, in a way, it still is this, but it's this from the caller. It's the yeah. what? It's what would have been this right. if you passed it in from the from the caller yeah. side. If you if you would inline it, if you would inline the entire the entire uh, stack static course, awesome. Yeah, which I think this is a this is a what's the word for? This is what I assumed it would do. Right. <laughs> so right. it's nice to have that now work. Your when your assumptions are now confirmed that this would work this way, it, so it now right. does. That's super helpful. Yeah. And we we use this this pattern in several places. It's not a like it, so it's definitely a necessary one that we had workarounds for, but yeah, we you don't have to. Passing the scope, right? Can yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Yep. yep. Uh, and I believe yeah. awesome. last one. Uh, you you already saw it kind of it, you, when you guys were talking earlier, but the, yeah. the new uh, Bring UI component, the HTTP client. Yep. Um, I, my example probably doesn't do enough justice of how like what this can kind of unlock, but the basic premise is that with this uh, HTTP client, it adds like the same interface you get when you make a, a new Cloud API, which is it lets you kind of hit the routes and send you know requests yep. with headers and parameters and all that. Yep. Um, uh, but I mean, in this example, I'm just wrapping an existing cloud API, but like, that's not the only way to make things that can have routes and handle right. HTTP requests. Right. So having this abstraction available to other forms of that is a, you know, a, huge, a pretty big uh, bonus. And it comes with, uh, I didn't do it here, but this also, you can provide like an API schema, an open yep. API schema, which then gets put into uh, this interface to provide like, uh, I'll say type safe, route safe uh, request handling. So you actually know the routes in the UI. You don't have to just guess. Yeah. So it's, uh, so it's, it's super relevant to the uh, TSOA service that uh, Lad uh, Cohen has implemented in Winglib. That basically mm -hmm. TSOA is a TypeScript uh, annotation for designing web services. And it produces uh, open API spec as well. So you can just load mm -hmm. the open API spec. It, it runs on Express, it runs in any, anywhere, it runs on Express, so you can just run it. And then you have the same kind of uh, our HTTP client 
that basically kind of goes directly to TypeScript. That's uh, super, super, super cool. Uh, the fact that we kind of extracted that, this entire view. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Super cool. That's it. Awesome. Wow. Thanks. That's that's what that was Paul. Paul was Paul Dana. I think it was kind of oh, released yeah. yesterday, right? You know, something like that. Yeah, that was yeah, that's that's yeah. a brand yeah. brand new. Brand yeah. new feature. Oh, you play around with this. Super cool. Well, uh Mark, I love do you wanna show your uh do, do you wanna uh, so do you so as you can see a lot you wanna show we can see you a lot you know, over here. Can, <laughs> okay. So I love wanna show Mark, thank you very much for uh, doing this. Uh, if you want to stay around and see how a lot the uh, fucks up again, yeah, burns again. It's uh, sure. Yeah. We, we cannot. Maybe we shouldn't put him. Just talk uh, without him. Uh, <laughs> okay. Look at this. So state machine. Okay. Definition. Okay. Oh, nice. Nice. Remember this? Yeah. And I can run this. I can actually run this. So I can say, let's uh, put uh, name. Yeah. E, e. Starts with an e. yeah, I think it's uh, it's 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 almost we should basically say Mark the King of India. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh... sure. <laughs> I'll take it. Sure. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. It's running. Nice. Has name? Yes. Put name in bucket. You want to see the bucket? Yeah, how, how could you compare uh, uh, logs, uh, kind of uh, uh, open telemetry logs for this thing? It's I like... mean, different discussion. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So we have this lambda function of put name in bucket. Um, where is the resource? They, they we're, keep changing this. Uh, we're not, you're not, oh, you're not seeing this. Okay, yeah. whatever. So yeah, and now we can, let, let's say I'm executing this without the name, right? So I have like a flow that uh, goes without the name. And then it goes, has na no name, checks if there's a name in bucket, has a name in bucket, gets the name from the bucket, and shows you the output. <laughs> and and this, I, I I literally just compile this to, I didn't touch, it It did work out of the box, right? Yeah, yeah, you just, uh, I just deleted like 3,000 uh, log watch, uh, log watch uh, groups, log yeah. log watch groups. Yeah. But uh, other than that, it's uh, yeah, it's actually working. Super cool, super cool. Um, um, but the surface area for step functions is huge, right? I mean, the, the, the fact so, kind of, so the, the surface area for the for the state machine no, is actually not that not huge. the state machine. The what basically what we kind of mentioned about. The fact that you can trigger that uh, you don't need a lambda function in order for an SNS topic to trigger a queue. Right. Step functions kind of yeah. Communicate step functions everything. has a lot of like yeah. native integrations. Yeah. But but I but I realize that if if you know if we want to build something like uh, an abstract workflow workflows engine, then it needs to work on on the cloud library layer, right? Hmm. And so you could have those types of integrations with the cloud library layer. So for example. Subscribe from you know subscribe from yeah. queue so you can connect the workflow to a queue yeah. and then every message that goes into the queue will trigger the workflow yeah um, and then behind yeah. the scenes it could be implemented with like you know yep. cloud specific native yep. interesting uh, integrations interesting I like that that's an interesting angle makes everything much more simpler uh, and then yeah and then infights work and the cloud resources work and, and so it, it's at, at that level at, 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 it, it's at the cloud library level right got it. I'm sorry we gave up on the impossible version of this, which was converting or in-flight code to <laughs> ASL uh, or to workflows. I, we didn't. I didn't give up on this yet, but I think. I like, mean, we, it's all. It's I, in our hearts, but. It's, it's <laughs> our, no, I, what, the way I'm thinking about it is that first of all, let's create an API, sure. and get to a point where we like the API, and then we can decide if we want to add language, you know language uh, specific syntax to produce this type of, to use this type of API. So you see what I'm saying? Like, like technically right now I have like an execute step and the execute step is an in-flight closure in. We can do something in the language that will sugar that, right? Like that basically create like Maybe something. Maybe TSX. Yeah, exactly. Wing is six. We can add like TSX. Yeah, we're, for, we're, uh, back, we're back. We're back. We've completed the circle, guys. Yes. We always saw completed 90 minutes. 
<laughs> so, so I think uh, I think we should uh, wrap it up. Wrap it up, Mark. Thank you very much for this. This was awesome, Ella. Thank you for doing this. This was great, and thank you for being such a sport. And, uh, and Nathan and uh, Nathan for, for for helping setting up and Philip for doing this, and, and amazing uh, amount of viewers and 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 commenters. Thank you all. And uh, like uh, we said, let's uh, let's uh, meet in Winglang in our Slack. Email a lot, uh, and uh, have, let's have fun. Uh, let's finish up with uh, uh, Taming Pella. Any, any other anything to say? Uh, everyone, go comment on that issue about async CDK. <laughs> and yell, at, yell and yell it aloud about it. Th thumbs down his should, his comment. Everyone all... be really angry. We should <laughs> organize like a, an event, an event about async uh, CDK. A bashing event, basically. Yeah, everyone will love that. I want to be the host. <laughs> <laughs>